that's how they excel you, bro. It's like 13, five, we got 14, so we were so close. Whoa, whoa. 500 times. I just won 500 bucks. I want 500 dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I want 500 dollars! <laughs> bro, what do I got? <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Rarely do you just win uh um scratcher? Yeah. When did you start playing scratcher? I this is the first time since I was a drug dealer that I bought a scratcher. Yeah, it's an old it's an old habit. Here, you can get an extra. All right, fuck, I'm back. You hit record. Poppy just won 500 bucks. Uh, Taking off work tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck that, you, you got anything to say about that? <laughs> St. Patty's, baby. Love you guys, man. Cheers to that. It was a good day. Nick got fired. <laughs> That's like getting money, I'm on my thug again Trying to stack a little dub, trying to catch a win And next time I drop a coupe, it's gonna be a twin turbo Always been a G, but I ain't never been a herd though Way I'm switching lanes, it's shit What's up guys, welcome back to the Millennial Mentality Podcast It is your boy Peter Price, and I am here to debut my new co-host Papo Taco, a.k.a. Kevin Rasheem What's up, baby? Rasheem? I've known you for way too long to not know how to say your it's last name It's actually Rasheem, it's Norwegian is that how you want me to say it? No. Yeah, dude. I, Resheim <laughs> is uh, not what I would have expected, but that's okay. Um, Papo Taco, I think is how most people probably know you. because A I lot mean, of people You're, you're well known on the gram. Right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, my boy Kev, you guys have seen him before. He's been on the podcast in the past. Um, we'll probably retouch on some of the topics we talked about last time you were on the pod, just for those people who haven't seen that episode. That was a really good episode. I mean, we went in depth, so if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that. But we might retouch on some of those topics just to kind of like reintroduce you to the people who are new. But I mean, me and Kevin have known each other for a long time. I was trying to think about it today. It's probably been like eight or nine years. 2015. Damn, you knew the date. Okay. Yep, June. Um, so I'm bad at math. What's 2015? Eight That's years like ago. Eight years ago. Eight years. Okay, cool. So I was on point. Um, yeah, man, I mean, we've known each other for a minute, and I feel like we've been, like, you've been one of my best friends as long as we've known each other, you know? Um, we clicked really, uh, quickly when we first met. From day one. Yeah, man, we met playing paintball for, this is one of those stories that we talked about on our first episode with you, but for those of you who didn't see that, uh, Kevin and I met playing paintball. We've played competitive paintball for a few years. Um, we've been taking a little bit of a break as of lately, but we might be coming back soon. I think we have a tournament at the end of this year that we're going to be playing. And that was, um, that was that was on the low, bro. No one's well. To know the that, the man. word is out now, baby. Reckless, Reckless is back. Um, but me and Kev first met at the paintball field, and uh, we weren't taking it super serious then. I mean, it, since then we've we've taken it a lot more serious. But at this time, we were both just kind of fucking around and going out there and having fun. And uh, me and Dom Cota Cavage, shout out to Dom. We're shout going out, out to Dom. the field every Sunday, and we'd get like you know a twelve pack of beers and just go and fuck around, you know. And uh, Kevin, James, Alex, Alex Fjord, shout out Alex, um, and Adam, Adam, um, you guys all were pulling up, and you parked right next to us. And as we were all gearing up and getting our shit ready to go, you guys pulled out a cooler and like you were cracking beers with us. You know, it was like yeah. probably 11 a.m. Yeah. And uh, we were like, oh, you guys know how to play paintball. Like that's the way to do it. Can't spell paintball without beer. 100. percent And uh, so we all exchanged information that day, and then just played paintball together every Sunday after that for for years. You know, it really turned into quite the the friendship between all of us. You know, that whole squad, um, which turned into Palm Beach Reckless, which is oh, our paintball yeah. team. Um, so anyway, you know, me and Kevin go way back. I'm super stoked to have you on the pod, bro. I can't think of anyone that I would, you know, rather have Phil and Nick's shoes than you, man. We've, uh, we've always just gelled so well together. And I think you and I just organically have good conversations off camera even. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think this will be a lot of fun, dude. I'm excited for people to get to know you a little better and understand just how like funny you are and how, you know. I don't know. I think you, you and I are going to have a good time doing this. You know? uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm sad to see Nick go. It's been amazing having Nick. Shouldn't have fired him. 
<laughs> That's not how it happened. The people okay. saw the episode last week. Nick did not get fired. By any means, he owns just as much of this podcast as I do. Uh, he is taking a step back due to, you know, just Ignelli Enterprise, his company, thriving um, and doing really well. He's got a lot on his plate at the moment. So he's uh, he's just taking a step back, you know. And if he ever wants to come on, you know, it'll be the three of us. Kevin's not going anywhere either. Mm-hmm. Um, but Nick is always welcome back whenever he wants. And he knows that. So um, always love for Nick. But, again, I, um, I think you are, like, the ideal replacement, you know. There's love no it. one else I would rather do this with. Oh, man. Thanks, bro. Um, I'm happy to be here. Of course, bro. I'm excited to have you. So that being said, um, you know, there's even been a, a significant amount of change in your life since your last episode on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and one of those main things being you now work for Ignelli Enterprise. Damn right. Next um, my balls. That's right. So, I mean, talk to me a little bit about that. What's it like working with Nick and, like, what's what's the difference between the Nick you see on the podcast and the Nick you see at the job site? You see a little bit of both. So Nick on the podcast, he's hilarious. He's he's very serious at times, very motivational. Sure. And then at work, he's the same way. But when I started working for Agnelli Enterprise, it was just me and him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I had you were the first employee of Agnelli Enterprise. First and only. Yeah. At the time. At the time. And then, um, you know, him and his dad taught me everything. I had no idea what like a multi-purpose tool was to sure. building a wall. You know. Yeah. So it was really cool. He's very patient. That's something I was like worried about with Nick because he's trying to get this business going. But he was really good, really patient. Yeah. Uh, really, really good at teaching, which I really appreciated. You know. Um, but he's kind of the same guy, man. He's kind of the same guy, and it's good because I see him grow every day. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's new to him being a boss. So seeing him grow and and being who he is, it's it's really awesome. Good, man. Well, that was a very nice answer. Did the fact that you know Nick's definitely going to watch this episode influence that answer at all? I wrote this down before. I <laughs> that seemed a little rarest. <laughs> well, that's good, bro. I, uh, me, you know, uh, here we are again at In The Biz Inc., my tattoo shop that I work out of on a daily basis. Um, we work side by side because the office for Ignelli Enterprise is under the same roof. And um, from my personal experience... Nick is drastically different in work mode versus uh, podcast mode, um, and not in a bad way either way. He's more you know? intimidating. You can only you can't like you know expect to be taken too serious if you're talking about your dick and stuff on the job site, you know. Mm-hmm. Which he still does. We're that. trying to run an entertaining podcast here, so dick comes up quite a bit. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that being said, obviously he's a little bit different on the job site, but that's kind of to be expected. But I think you're absolutely right um, in the sense that he, he takes his business really serious and he does a really good job considering, mm-hmm. um, like, it's good to hear that he was good with training you and patient with training you because that doesn't always come naturally. Um, and Nick is new to having employees. You know, you were his first employee. And um, I'm glad to hear that you had, like, a good experience with that. Yeah, it's great. You know, at the it. end of the day, Nick's a good guy, but also um, it's easy to get, you know, you come from management as well. And it's easy to get lost in we've got like a job to do and mm-hmm. we have to get this done. And it's easy to become impatient with people who don't just like pick up speed right away or get it right away. And you, you know, you had no construction experience Nothing. starting I, with that company. I couldn't so, even hang a TV. So what made you? I remember that. <laughs> Shout out to Alex Fitz. He came and hung our TVs in the apartment we used to live in. So what made you make that switch from, you know, being in hospitality, which is what you had done basically your whole life, you and I both, what made you make the change from hospitality to construction? I think, so I was thinking about this actually the other day. Yeah. So I went from working in two re- for two restaurants within eight years, mm-hmm. and then the last like two years of my um, hospitality life, I was just hopping from restaurant to restaurant, yeah. just trying to make it work, you know what I mean? But it, it's same shit, different toilet. Um, it got to the point where, like, the last job I went to, the company went bankrupt, and, like, it was a whole mess, and I was like, I could never do this again. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, granted, I had the financial, like, stability to, like, take a break and start something new, and I was like, I'd rather start now, start fresh again now, brand new, and then uh, then <laughs> any time later. So yeah. that was, that's what really did it. And then do you find that there's any overlap of, like, the skills that you learned in hospitality that you use now in construction, or is it just completely polar opposite? There's no crossover. I mean, yeah, 
patience, you know, like, sure. like something with hospitality and construction, especially like a day today, like it's a curveball every day. You don't know who's walking in. You don't know what's happening. You don't know if a, 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 a pipe is going to break and burst when you're doing a demo or whatever. And yeah. kind of in hospitality, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to come in. Sometimes you have a nice, easy shift or sometimes you have a terrible shift, but it's just, mm -hmm. I think that's the same thing. But aside that, no, I think it's a whole different realm of scope of work. Yeah. I feel similar with, you know, what I do with tattooing now. Um, I definitely try to take a lot of what I learned in hospitality as far as like customer service goes, you know, right. and putting the client first and making them comfortable and happy. I try to apply that to what I do in the tattoo world, um, which I feel like was lacking a little bit. You know, I'm not speaking for all tattoo artists or all tattoo shops saying that no one gives good customer service. But the tattoo industry doesn't necessarily have the best reputation as far as True. being warm and welcoming when you walk in the shop, you know, or just like the environment itself of the shop <clears throat> being comfortable and relaxing. You know, right. more often than not, it's a rectangular room filled with stations, as many stations as they could fit in that Trophies room. Trophies everywhere. Trophies everywhere, <laughs> which is a good sign, yeah. but death metal playing in the background or some sort of music blaring, you yeah. know. Um, and then, you know, again, not speaking for all artists, but sometimes not the most friendly welcome when you come in, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, what do you want? You know, and if you don't have a picture of what you want to get, I, I've figure had a lot out. of, figure <laughs> it out. Yeah. And you know, I've had, the reason I say that too, is not only just from my own experience, but like, I've had a lot of people come in to get tattooed by me saying they walked into a shop without having a picture of what they want, you know, and just an idea of what they want, an artist just being like, oh, yeah, we don't really do that here. Like, you have to have a reference of what you want to get done. So, like, they won't do custom work, you know? And That's kind of weird. It, it sounds weird, right? But I think we're really moving towards that type of uh, day and age where everyone's... 90% of my clientele has a picture from Pinterest of, you know, someone that already has the tattoo or a drawing or design that they already found, and that's what they want. And obviously, those are much easier than someone coming to you with just an idea and saying, can you create this for me? But I mean, we're artists. That's kind of what our job is to do. If right. someone comes to you with an idea, you're supposed to be able to create it for him. And uh, the idea of just turning people away because they don't have like a copycat image for you to do sounds a little crazy. But I've had many customers come in saying they went to multiple shops before they contacted me and they just got turned away. That's kind of... Shitty. A little insane, right? Yeah. But that's sort of the so tattoo money. industry, man. Well, sure. But, okay, so say you work at a shop. You know, I do a private studio thing where it's appointment only. Okay. Um, but some people work at a shop. Say there's two tattoo shops on Clematis Street. I'm sure they get a ton of walk-in business just because of the traffic that's on Clematis Street. And uh, say you're an artist working there. And someone comes in, they have no idea what they want, or they just have an idea and they need you to spend a couple hours drawing this thing for them and coming up with the design. You could either take that on, or you can turn it away and hope that 15 minutes from now, someone walks in with a picture that you can just copy and paste and That's put true. on them. So the idea is, like, if the shop is busy enough, I guess, and they're taking walk-in clients, which my shop doesn't take walk-in clients, it's appointment only, but many shops do, um, they could just turn away that difficult tattoo that, you know, seems like more work than they feel like doing and hope that someone different walks in the door in 20 minutes and they can just do that one instead, hmm. you know? So, I mean, it sounds crazy, but I've had so many clients come in saying that was their exact experience that, I, I mean, I think that's a significant part of the industry around here, at least. Yeah. Um, and again, not speaking for all shops. I'm sure there's plenty of artists around here that do custom work, but I'm just, you know, speaking from what I've heard clients come in and tell me. Same with, like, single needle tattoos. People, you know, it's so trendy right now to get that fine line, single needle, mostly with girls, but they want like that real thin script, that right. super fine line. And um, that's become super popular lately. And I've had a ton of girls come in to get that done and say they went to, you know, two other artists or hit other people up before this that said, no, you can't do that. It's impossible. You know, just because you saw that on TikTok doesn't mean it's actually realistic. People can't do that. Um, you know, that's not going to heal well. That's going to fade. It's going to fall out. Which, 10 years ago, that was probably the truth because the equipment wasn't the same. People weren't using the same, you know, needles and technology that we have now. Um, or even techniques, you know, techniques were different. It was like a lot of old school traditional shit 10 mm -hmm. years ago. And, uh, but the game has changed, you know. We've learned a lot in the last few years. The, the equipment's different. The technology's different. And now you can do single needle tattoos that last forever, you know. It's, it doesn't have to fall out after it heals. 
Um, but you'll get a lot of people that say they went to other shops and the artist turned them away. And there's a lot of, you know, reasons behind that too of, you know, you might do a single needle tattoo depending on the piece and how detailed and intricate it is. It might need to get touched up. But for that same reason I was saying before, where if you're at a shop that gets a ton of walk-in business, do you want to do this tattoo that's going to take you 20 minutes and you can only charge 100 bucks for it and you're going to have to have them come back to do a touch-up another day? Yeah. Or would you rather say, no, that's impossible, have someone else walk in the door in 20 minutes that you can charge them more money for and you're only going to have to do it once? So I see it's both like, sides. You know, it's, I, I sort of see both sides. Um but I, I would wish artists that were turning people away were at least being honest with them, you know, right. saying, you know, that you could get that done, but I'm just not the artist for you. I don't want right. to do that, you know, um, instead of telling them it's impossible. And I feel like the demand is there, though. Like, tattoos are, like, such a hot thing in the last 10 years. Right. So it's like, I feel like well, maybe that's probably you guys should do that, or is that too hard for a new person to do? Um, a little bit of both. I think it depends on, you know, your style that you gravitate towards or, you know, what clicks for you initially. I, I don't think... Fine line stuff is for everybody, but like JoJo as an example, who's a year into her career, um, she likes doing single needle fine line stuff. That's like what she would prefer to do. It's difficult. The thinner the needle, the harder it is to pull a clean straight line. Really? Because you'll see more of the variations in it. Mm. You know, if you're pulling a big fat line, it's pretty easy to make it look straight. Right. Um, the thinner the lines are, the harder it is to make it look clean and straight. Um, so it's definitely a more challenging style to do, but I also just think everyone's different, you know? Um, some people, like, depending on, like, the art that you did growing up and the, the style of drawing that you like and how how much practice you have drawing in general, um, there's so many variables, you know, so it's different. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily that, like, a beginner can't do fine line stuff. Right. It just it depends on what you practiced during your apprenticeship and, and during those early months of you learning to tattoo. Right. Um, but it's definitely more challenging. The thinner the lines, the harder it is to make them clean. Um, well, I got on a big rant there about tattooing. I don't even know how I went down that <laughs> rabbit hole. But um, well, it's good to know. So if you're getting a tattoo, don't just walk in there. Well, yeah, th I think that's a big thing. Um, you know, tat like you said, the demand is high, and that's I feel like people that want guidance though. Like some people like have trouble, and I see this in construction. Yeah, it's like they want to be told what to what decision to make because they don't have an in them. To make that decision you know mm. so maybe going to a professional i did that the other day you know like i wanted to like redo my whole hair i went to a salon oh yeah and basically like, instead of a barber shop basically like hey this guy's a professional and i just where the barber shop can kind of be the same way they say what are we doing today and they mm -hmm. expect you to say skin fade two on the top or, you right. know like they expect you to know what you want exactly instead of being like well what do you think would look good you know right and that's what i was and i ended up getting the same haircut Paying four times as much. Right, right. right. That's a good example. That yeah. was a good comparison, Poppy. Uh, what made you want to change your hair up? You just been doing the same thing for a long time. Yeah, my hairline's getting worse. Uh, oh. Wanted to do something with the beard to save my hairline or yeah. something. It was that or go. If like, I was at the point where, if the barber told me, like, maybe you should shave your head, I would have done it. Okay, well, this is an interesting point. Um, and I think. The first week of April, our guest is going to be uh, my boy Anthony, who owns Exclusive Barber Lounge, okay. who also does scalp micropigmentation. That's okay. what he does more than he cuts hair. He hardly cuts hair anymore. He majorly wow. does SMP. And, uh, I mean, that's what he specializes in, basically, is guys who are, I mean, guys and girls, who have, you know, thinning hair or, you know, receding hairlines and kind of figuring out how to bring that back to life, you know, whatever way that that works for each person's head you know like everyone's different so what it's, is that like do they just so um it's i don't want to give away too much before the episode because i want to let him explain it and right. i may not do it justice but the cool thing that i'm so interested to talk to him about is there's so many similarities between smp and tattooing okay the equipment is almost the same the machines are almost the same like many the same company that makes my machine for tattooing makes SMP machines. You could even use my machine for SMP. You just need to buy smaller needles. Okay. Um, and basically all they're doing is putting little dots in your head with, they don't use like black ink. They'll use like more hair toned inks. Okay. Um, and they're just putting little dots to simulate the look of follicles. Right. You know what I mean? So then like, I mean, say that you did want to shave your head. 
if you shave your head right now, you're still going to have the same hairline, which you'll see because oh, there's little, that. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you'll still see the dots where your hair was growing. And what they would do is, you know, shave your head, but then give you a new hairline, okay. which will match the dots that exist from your hair because your hair, you know, is a certain color and he knows how to match those colors right. and then give you a new hairline. So it looks like you've got a full head of hair. You just chose to shave your head, All right. but you'll have a nice clean, like, Hairline. Maybe he'll do it for me. Well, it'll Hopefully. be it'll be a great guest we'll for you to out. get to talk to. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you'll have a consultation on camera. We'll yeah, find out. I'll, I'm um, down. So yeah, Anthony's coming like the first week of April. I'm pretty sure. Awesome. Um, and that'll that'll be an interesting conversation. I'm excited to talk to him just because I know there's a lot of similarities with tattooing. Mm -hmm. And now it'll be even cooler because you'll Might have be some questions for yourself. Also, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, it's something that I've wanted to look into also, just because of how similar the two industries are. And it would be like a cool thing to add to my capabilities, you know. So when Mike from Unforgettable Inc., shout out Mike. Yep. He's certified in SMP. Yeah, he had to be. Because in order Coral for Springs him is to weird, open, right? Yeah, for him to open his tattoo shop, it, it, the Coral Springs has some crazy laws against tattoos. I don't know. This is back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's changed. Uh, but at that area, and especially that plaza, he had to say it was 60% SMP, 40% tattooing. Mm. From what I know. I could be wrong, yeah. though. But I mean, even this fucking place is weird. I'm not allowed to put tattoo on the door. Wow. You know? So some the people think that it brings the a, wrong, a bad crowd, you know? Or, like, it's a shady business or some shit. Just for whatever reason. But um, you can have a bar till four in the morning, you know? Yeah, that's true, that's too. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so shout out to Mike. Uh, the guy that got me into tattooing taught me the very first things I know oh, about yeah. tattooing, bro. Shout out to Mike. I wouldn't have my career without that guy. Um, all right, so Kev, that was an interesting rant we just went on. That's not the direction I thought <laughs> the show was going to go in, but that was good, man. I'm glad. Um, and it makes me excited for Anthony because uh, I hadn't even thought about the fact that maybe you would be interested. I, I even, like... I explore options. I'm yeah, you might as well. I'm running out of time, Pete. Well, dude, you're a good-looking guy. Worst case scenario, you wear that hat a lot more often. You, I sleep with this hat. <laughs> Jacqueline doesn't know nah, <laughs> about <I> the hair. <laughs> she knows. Her, her dad is bald, so it's like even harder for me to go bald. I was like, I can't, he's already bald. I can't. So I've always heard that you get like your hair genetics from your mom's dad. Yeah, I heard that too, but I've never met the guy. You don't know what he looks like? No. Does he have his hair? Can't even know. tell you his name. Wow, okay. Um, Grandpa. Well, I'm rooting in your favor. Have you ever tried Rogaine or tra thought about Nothing. Rogaine? Yeah, Nothing. Yeah. I tried Rogaine on my face one time, like years ago. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's well, it's a thing. I didn't just like decide maybe I'll try it. On YouTube, I, I saw some videos about guys putting Rogaine on their face to grow a beard, and I was like, I mean, your I, beard looks good. Dude. I would love. A, well. I don't really give Rogaine any credit for the way my beard looks now. And even still, it's patchy. Like, I've got... I Kevin asked if he could sit on this side today, and I told him no, because this is my good beard yeah, side. Yeah, this is my pretty side. You yeah. took it, but... Show the people right. the neck tat. You wanted to be on this side for the neck tat. Yeah, man. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I tried Rogaine one time. It didn't do me a lot of good, and it, like, fucking burned. And one of the side effects was, like, chest pain. And I was like, dude, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I don't have a panic attack in the middle of the night because I want a beard. I don't want it that bad. Oh, my um, God. So I gave up on that. I think I still have the bottle of Rogaine at my house. I used it, like, <laughs> twice, and then I saw the side effects. It was like, Recently? No, this was probably, like, a year and a half, two oh, years okay. ago or something. Um, I do still – you know what a derma roller is? Uh, it's like a little – you might have seen one, like, on an Instagram ad before. It's like a little – it looks like the razor, uh, a handle of a razor, mm -hmm. but on the end of it, it's a little wheel that has a bunch okay, of spikes I've seen in it. it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and I've you seen roll it. it over your beard or like your your area that you want to grow hair in, and it like uh, activates the follicles or something. Okay. And so I just I recently got one of those, and I've been trying that to fix my patchy side. You want to know the trick? You well, you said shave against the grain. Been doing it. You're a psychopath. Since I was like okay, uh, eight. this is such a good. I'm so glad you brought this up. For anyone that like has ever shaved anything in their life, um, I think girls are the exception, because I'm pretty sure girls like they have to when they shave their legs. I yeah, think. they shave everything, uh, everything against the grain. Oh, I do it down there too, bud. No way, I dude. You God. don't bleed. Oh, I bleed. <laughs> <laughs> I bleed. 
And then I get bumps. Oh. Yeah, dude. So why do you do it that way? If you go with the grain, none of the side effects happen. I feel like it takes longer. Oh my god, that's so oh funny. <laughs> Tears coming out. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah, I made that mistake one time when I was a kid. Once? Yeah, one time. Yeah. That's all it took. Dude, it fucking hurt. I bled, and I got bumps, and I was like, well, I did that wrong. Yeah, and no. then I learned, you go with the grain. It doesn't even bleed. Uh, never mind, it does still, still bleeds. <laughs> but that's, you did tell me this before. That's how yeah. you say, that's what you attribute your beard to, is yeah. that you shaved against the grain for so long. No one in my family has a beard except me. You do have a nice beard. Dad, dude. mom, brother, other brother, none. You do have a nice beard. I'm going to give you credit for that. I don't know if you should give the credit to shaving against the grain. I don't know if that's what did it or not. I like to think that. I didn't yeah. do any beard oil, nothing. Yeah, I feel like beard oil is probably a hoax. Um, Someone's rich. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, there, there's a little bit of logic to it. There's, like, vitamins and shit in it that I guess are good for you, but, like, I don't know, probably a scam. Um <laughs> <laughs> what isn't a scam these days? Am I right? Everything. Um, okay, so let's <laughs> let's move on to the next topic. I don't know how we went down that rabbit hole, but it was fun. Um, okay, so Kev, another thing that in, in you know, in addition to working for Ignelli Enterprise now, um, now that you've got more freedom mm -hmm. and more time on your hands, I know something you and I have both been talking about for a long time that I think was like a great route for you to go down, and something you've been like entertaining seriously lately is streaming. Right, yeah, so so for anyone who doesn't really know me, I'm a huge nerd. I play video games. It's hard to believe. Day. Yeah, right now I'm kind of on a dry streak because I'm waiting for uh, this game, Throne and Liberty, to come out. And What's it called? Throne and Liberty. Okay. For someone who doesn't know any gaming, it's like kind of like the World of Warcraft, but now they're able to like put it in consoles, which I, that's what I like. I prefer console. I know everyone's like PC, and I do play some PC games, but I don't know. I'm just a controller guy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, you know you can play PC games on a controller. Yeah, I know, but a PC is like $2,500, and then you got to get it like fucking... It's bad after like five years or something. I don't know. Okay. I've always just been console. Sure. It's just the convenience, too, I guess. I think most people out there that play video games are console people. Right. But most streamers, I would say, are probably on PC. It's not that common for streamers to be on console, right? Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess majority is PC, but there's not many games that, like, this game is going to be on PC as well. It's not yeah. just exclusive for uh, console. So right. that's something I really want to get into. Uh, you can follow me at Papo Taco Gaming. On yeah, that's Twitch, right. YouTube, whatever. So you've already got the channels and everything set up. Have you been streaming at all, or you just have the, the channel set up? Not really. I have everything set up. I should be streaming. I just have no game. Like right now, I have. I can't even tell you. I haven't turned my Xbox on maybe a week. I just have really? no. I turn it on and I'm like. So I don't when's know the what new game play. drop? Somewhere between May and June, from what I hear. So this you got a minute. A, yeah, this game's been in production for ten years. Wow. Well, what's the style of game? It's kind of like a World of Warcraft, like a massive multiplayer. You kill people, level up. Kind of okay. like RuneScape or all those games. Wow. Okay, um, and what like what's making you wait until then to start streaming? Cause I have no other game to play right now. I was playing. You don't Mad play anything else. I was playing Madden for a while. I was doing Madden. I was doing like tournaments and stuff. And those kids are so sweaty. Yeah. I was. I couldn't even keep up, man. It was. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. If you know me, that game brings so much anger out of me. Like. <laughs> you, you'll see a different side of me. You'll hear a different side of me. Like it's pretty bad. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that's not good for my health, you know? Sure, no. I mean, uh, that's on you to make that call. And, I mean, if you recognize it, then, yeah, I think it's, pretty bad. it's probably a good call. Um, one comparison I wanted to make, too, to streaming. As a guy who, you know, you remember, did we live together when I streamed, or you had already moved out at that point? I think I moved out right after. So I, I had tried streaming for a little bit. Um, Bought all the equipment, got a PC, me and JoJo both, so shout out to JoJo. <clears throat> uh, she had had a PC and streamed prior to me meeting her, um, and then that kind of always intrigued me. Once I started gaming again, because she had this fire PC, like I would hop on it every now and then and play what I felt like playing. Uh, I got the equipment and started streaming for a little bit, uh, a, a very little bit, like maybe like two months or something like that, and then... I just, you know, tattooing really took up a lot of my time. I started taking that career a lot more serious and really diving into, like, Pete Casso as a brand. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it took away from my time being able to stream or, you know, just even I probably had the time still to do it, but I felt guilty spending time doing that when I felt like I should be building this other brand that really pays me, you know, Mm -hmm. like obviously the goal with streaming is to do eventually get paid and make money doing it. But it, you, it's just like podcasting. Like it's a long road. You know, the goal for this podcast is to hopefully make money one day doing it. But we know that we're probably going to do it for a long time for free. Um, which I'm cool with. Sure. Uh, yeah. But streaming was kind of the same thing in my mind, where it's like it was fun to do, but I knew it was going to take a long time to build to monetize. And when I started tattooing and doing like the Picasso brand, making the merch, making like the skateboards and other goods like that, um, I realized it's more important to put my time into that than, uh, you know, streaming. And so I sort of fell off with it. But I think there's even a comparison there. Uh, with like the art aspect of what I was mm-hmm. doing at that time, starting my tattoo career three years ago now, um, a big part of that was having to like almost rebrand myself as far as like, you know, not being Pete, the restaurant guy anymore, the guy from Kachina that change. throws the party. Cause that's how every, you know, I, I had a big network of people and a lot of people that I knew, but they saw me as the guy that threw the party at Kachina. So, I mean, how is it going to seem when all of a sudden I'm like, no, I, I'll do your tattoos now, you know? Right. And it's just like, oh, holy shit, where'd that come from? Right. I didn't want it to come out of nowhere and seem so crazy. So that's why, I mean, you'll remember, we were definitely still living together at this time. I was staying up all night, you know, literally pulling all-nighters, doing skateboards and painting shit and making t-shirts, printing, screen printing t-shirts. And all of that was an effort to rebrand myself as Pete Casso, an artist, you know, a guy yeah. that's been, do- I've been doing art my whole life. I just hadn't had a business for it, you know, or a way to monetize it. So it wasn't my focus. And coming from being in the hospitality business for over eight years, I had to like rebrand myself. Right. And that was my way of doing it. it was really putting a lot of my focus into just creating art, Um, whether that was on canvases or, you know, on skateboards, because I thought that was a little cooler. Screen printing T-shirts, myself, like, literally in the kitchen. Dude, how about wardrobes from you? Yeah, bro. (laughs) I mean, you remembered, like, I would have the ironing board out in the living room. You'd come home from work at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'd have shit everywhere. Everywhere. And uh, I would literally stay up all night. Kevin would come home at 3 o'clock in the morning and see me working on something, and then wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning to make breakfast, and I'd still be working on shit on the fucking patio. Or tattooing yourself. Or tattooing myself, yeah. I was a little bit of a psychopath, and so were you, to be (laughs) honest. I owe Kevin, for those of you who don't know, I owe a lot of my tattoo career to Kevin. Oh, man. Because for the. I mean it 100%, uh, because for the first month or, you know, even more than that of me tattooing, I was able to just practice on Kevin. I would go down to Unforgettable Inc., Mike Rodriguez's shop in Coral Springs at the time, and uh, watch him work, ask questions, learn from him, um, and just you know watch him do his thing. And you'd be able to absorb a lot mm-hmm. from just watching him work. And then I'd go home, I'd watch hours and hours of YouTube videos of other shop owners and artists you know, explaining why and how they do what they do. And, uh, and then Kevin would come home from work late at night and just be like, okay, what are we tattooing tonight, bro? And just let me fucking practice on it. My very first tattoo I ever did was on Kevin, where I thought for sure I'd be like practicing on myself for a long time before yeah. I tattooed anyone else. I mean, also with that, like, you got to support your friends like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I appreciate it, man. That was a life changing decision that you made on my part. What do you, I got a whole leg sleeve. Yeah, in a yeah. Month. It was a life changing decision for you too, COVID I guess. But and and tattooing, that's all it yeah, was. Yeah, that that's that awesome. is true. It was like right in the beginning of COVID when shit was shut down, like heavy. Yeah. You know, there was nothing to do. Everything was like takeout only, and uh, Kevin would come home from work and we'd just fucking do a new tattoo every day. Fuck but yeah. that was like how I learned. You know, I'd go to the shop, watch Mike work, learn from him, watch videos all day, and then practice on you. Yeah. And that was like a, a huge, I think like uh acceleration in me learning really quickly Damn, brother. i appreciate you man, yeah, man. I'll, I'll be always be I grateful love the tattoos, for that so you yeah you got a whole leg <laughs> sleeve in a very short period of time right uh, yeah yeah dude literally a month yeah I know. <laughs> literally a month <laughs> yeah man that's amazing um but okay so r- wrapping up my point that i was making was i was putting in a ton of time and effort um 
for something, you know, and it was burning me. Like, I don't want to say burning me out because I, I loved doing it and I was really excited to do it. But I was putting in a ton of time, literally 24 hour days into making art and working on anything artistic so that I could, you know, post it on Instagram and like start rebranding myself as Pete Caso, the tattoo artist, you know, yeah. and not Pete, the guy from Kachina. Um, in efforts to grow my identity as a tattoo artist. Um, and as fun and easy as that sounds to a lot of people, like, it's okay, not. how hard could it be to fucking sit at home and paint shit? You know, that sounds really fun. I'd love to do that rather than go to work. And granted, I agree. I love what I do, and I would rather do this than anything I've ever done in my life. You know, this is the career for me. I don't ever want to change it. Uh, but it doesn't mean it was easy, you know? And it no, doesn't mean it wasn't a lot of work. Um, and took a lot of effort and a lot of time and it was very strategic, you know, it wasn't just me fucking off and painting shit at the house for fun. It was in efforts to build a brand and build an identity that would then grow my tattoo business. Right. And, uh, I think that that translates pretty well to streaming where on the outside looking in, most people would be like, Oh, you want to play video games for a living? Sounds like a dream come true. You know, like that's easy. I would love to just go home and play video games and right. make be able to say I'm working, you know. But it's not that simple because it takes, first of all, skill. You got to be good enough at some sort of game right. that people give a fuck about watching you. But also, it takes a lot of time to build that platform, you know, and like generate a following. And yeah, it's not just streaming. You got to start making YouTube videos, shorts, reels. I don't even, which I don't even involves use my editing, TikTok. You know? I don't use TikTok at all. I just noticed that today. I, I looked at you. Uh, shout out to your TikTok. The taco plug. Yeah. Right? I no posts. How, zero nothing. posts. Hopefully we can change that pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but right. No, that's my exact point is it's not as simple as you just turn on the camera and you play video games. Like there's a lot of effort that goes into it where the person that doesn't do that, you know, the average person that works a restaurant job, you know, 12 hours a day would be like, yeah. oh, my God, what a dream come true to play video games and call it work. But it is fucking work. Yeah, you have to realize all these famous streamers, like Art, um, was it Aiden Ross, all these guys, they had one viewer for a long time. Yeah. That's what brings people out of streaming. You'll have one viewer for months, months. And by the time you see someone join your channel... Like, it's too late. They're gone. So it's mm -hmm. like you almost have to talk to yourself. No, yeah, right, right. You got to pretend like you've got 100 viewers yeah. when People you've tell got you, one. Turn it off. Turn off the viewer count off. Because so it doesn't matter. You yeah. got to just, just act like there's entertain. a thousand people there. That's a good point. Yeah. And I think it's almost the same thing for the podcast, too. I mean, we're doing this for the last two years. It's been two years? Yeah, I think so. Wow. I think so. Cheers to that. Um, yeah, obviously, we took this little break the last couple of months, right. three months or so, but. Prior to that, I think it was almost two years, um, where we didn't miss a Monday. Wow. You know? We uploaded every single Monday for... I th I'll have to look back. I might be misquoting that, but I think it was two years. Yeah, there was like 60 episodes last time I checked. 60-something, right? I think we're in 70-something, wow. maybe. Um, but we did that for a long time, just like I was saying before, making no money and you know views fluctuate sometimes we'd have a real good episode that maybe got 500 views i think our best one might have like 1700 views but oh. more often than not it's like 70 you yeah. know and that's okay because i know that that's Family like and friends shout out <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's part of the building process um and and i think streaming to the, the you know the point that you were just making is the same way where there's a, a big period of building before it takes right. off and sometimes it only takes, like, one little thing to blow you up, you know, yeah. or whatever the big break might end up being. Or sometimes it's a gradual build for a long period of time. Um, but my point is, you know, it's it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of energy. And as fun as playing video games as a job might sound, it's still a job, you know. Right. And it still takes a lot of work and a lot of that's, effort. I don't want it to be a job. And maybe that's where I might struggle. I feel sure. like... Well, uh, okay, maybe I, I take back what I said a little bit. I think by category, it is a job, it but it, it, you don't want it to feel that way. And I think right. that goes for any area of work, you know? Like, everyone always says, I don't remember what that quote is exactly, but it's like you do something you love every day. You'll never work, you never a, day work a day in your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think ideally when you make it streaming, that is 
the position that you're in, you know, right. hopefully you love doing it and that's why you started doing it, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. And I think the reason I called it a job to begin with is because like, it still requires a lot of strategy and effort and work ethic to get to the point where you can make a career out of it, yeah. you know? And yeah, sure. You don't want it to feel like a job, but at the end of the day, building that platform, it requires the same amount of effort that a job would. Right. Um, so yeah, man, I, I, I really want that to work out for you because again, I think that's going to be a really good route for you to go. You know, you've got the personality for it. You're funny as fuck. You're, you're very relatable in a lot of aspects. And I, I just think that that is like, I could just see that working for you. Yeah. You know, I see That's you awesome, doing man. that. Um, I have a little trick I want to do. So once I'm streaming and I get like a couple viewers and shit. Yeah. For anytime someone subscribes, I'll eat a taco. That's good. And I know I can at least eat 20 tacos in one hour. At least. <laughs> Very least. You know that from personal experience? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I consume anywhere between 50 to 100 a week. I can eat 20 in one. Is that a night. fact? Fact. <laughs> As a taco place next door, bro. Oh, my God. Dude. 50 to 100 a week. Um, That's my girlfriend. So what do you break that down to per day? Like, do you have, like, a routine? It's usually, and the worst part, it's usually all on the weekends. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. usually, I mean, I don't know. I usually order 10 to 20 at a time, and it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a couple of days. Oh, okay, so you'll do like a bulk order and then spread it out over a few meals. Yeah, just because or else I'd have to go back there every day. And which yeah, is kinda, sure. And like the shelf life for that, like for it to still be good, would be like uh, two, two days, three days. So you're crushing maybe 10 to 20 every two days. Yeah, but in one sitting, for sure I can do 20. <laughs> if you had to. No. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy. What's your go-to taco order? Al Pastor, baby. Yeah, yeah. Pork, for those who don't know. Yeah, They're, Al Pastor. Yeah. Do they, um, does the place you go to put pineapple on it? Yeah. No, oh. actually, I don't think this place does. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of, uh, look, I love pineapple. Even on the pizza, I'll eat it. I just, something about the taco. Well, now I, you're talking crazy. Those are two different things. Yeah, and for me, a lot of the times when you order those pineapple, like, and I have to like reheat it up. Reheating the pineapple kind of okay. gives me some weird, some weirdness. Well, I think the big thing there is the pineapple isn't supposed to be hot. Right. When you get the fresh taco, the taco's hot and the pineapple's cold. And I think that's what I love about it. I like the that. contrast. I like that. But it's as simple as popping the pineapples off when you reheat it and then plopping them back on right. after it's heated. You know? I, I Dude, I'm a huge fan of the Al Pastor tacos. That's... Uh, that's like my go-to order as well. But a big testament of if I'm going to really love them or not is, is if pineapple? they come with the pineapple. James is the same way. Yeah. But, I mean, for me, it's it's obviously – my. All right, look. You want a good taco? Yeah. Number one thing you look for is the tortilla. Sure, yeah, 100%. Yeah. If it's two tortillas, if it's flour, if it's corn, if it's – Oh, okay. So what's the deal with the two tortillas? Uh, I mean, everyone says it's because, like, if one tortilla won't hold it. Sure. But if you have one good corn tortilla – it should hold Which, it. Which, yeah, the place next door does it, Guadalajara. Shout out to Guadalajara Tacos. Okay. Not a sponsor, but you can be a sponsor if you want to. You just hit us I up. Would, that would be perfect. Yeah. But, yeah, they do one corn tortilla. And that's probably why I can do 20. I can't do Sure, 20. if you double up the yeah. bread. It takes, it takes, it's so heavy yeah. on me. See, sometimes I've heard, too, that the second tortilla is for the scraps. You know, if shit falls out of the taco, now you can make another taco with the second tortilla. So you only eat one with your taco. Okay. But when shit falls so you out. you make a shit taco You make after? a shit taco, yeah, with the extra. So, I mean, what are you going to do with the stuff that falls out otherwise? I, You're just going to scoop it up and eat it? Yeah. <laughs> well, how good would it be if you just had a spare tortilla? Good point. So good maybe point. you've been fucking up and just eating two tortillas and that's not what they were, the second tortilla was meant for. Yeah, but there's nothing worse than grabbing a taco and it just falling through. You know what I mean? 100%. That's yeah, like, I mean, that's unacceptable. And that happens a lot. Oh, that's okay. before... Unacceptable. With two tortillas sometimes, too. That oh, my God. That's, that's a greasy I, like, taco. I walk out. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't do that's it. That's no good. Yeah. You can't do that. After that, no. Let's switch gears a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you see the clip of Diplo recently? About no. He got, he got a blowjob from a guy. Oh, yeah. So I saw but that. He doesn't know if he's gay, but like a blowjob is a blowjob. He says it's not gay because he didn't make eye contact with the guy. Is he gay? Well, that's what I'm asking you, Papo Taco. And no shade to Diplo. 
But uh, what a crazy rationalization of um, if you don't make eye contact, it's not gay. Where do you draw the line? You know, if you have sex with a guy and you don't, and look you don't make eye contact, you almost can't. It would be pretty difficult to have sex with a man and make eye contact at the same time. Right. Just based on the way our human necks work. That's not how that you works. Know? So most guys that have sex with each other don't make eye contact. Maybe he's bisexual. Does that make it not gay? No, it no, makes it gay it's because gay. That's, that's how it's defined, you know? And that's not me giving my opinion. That's just like it's sort the, of the way in the, bro of book. the facts, you know? Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> no shade to anybody. Whatever your preference is, that's completely okay. We do not mind over here at the Millennial Mentality. Um, but Diplo, I don't know if he's correct in saying it's not gay if you don't make eye contact. Did anyone say anything after? Like, oh, there was lots of comments. For him and against him, but, you know, I figured we'd talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Whether that was a good decision or not, I'm not sure. Maybe that's why the camera turned off twice while we talked about it. That was fate telling Bleep. us we shouldn't do this. Okay, so I'm going to get to the uh, the big question that you've been waiting on because you, you read my iPad before we started, and uh, I didn't mean for you to do that. But Nick and I have had this debate for a long time. Since the beginning of this podcast, almost. And I'm curious to hear your stance on it. Wait, so you guys have talked about this with other people? Uh, I think it was between Nick and I. Wow, I just spit a lot when I said those words. I think it was between Nick and I. But my question to you, and my question to everyone watching this, too, is when you shower, do you intention like, do you wash your legs, like, you scrub them with soap when you shower? Or do you just... Put soap on your body, and then you let kind of gravity do the work for the lower part. I mean, when I say lower part, I think we obviously all wash and up to like thighs. Yeah, from the like the arm, arms mid, reach, mid thighs down. Do you bend over and wash your calves and ankles? Do you wash your feet then? That's what I'm asking you. Not all the time. No. I think. Thank you, Agnelli Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Ever since I started doing construction, I do. You're pretty dirty. Yeah, dude, I come home. Yeah, yeah. Even I wear long pants every time because uh, yeah. they took away Jort Friday from me. There's no more Jort Friday? Well, I was the only one wearing Jorts. Me and Well, you got to be a trendsetter. Yeah, but my Jorts got a little too tight, so I stopped wearing them. But <laughs> it was me and Steve. All the more reason wearing, to rock them, baby. <laughs> wearing the Jorts, and then they were wearing it for a week. Nick, actually, Nick, yeah, the Nick, mm -hmm. cut his own pair of jeans <laughs> But I think he cut him a little too short, and he was <laughs> walking this building with, like, jean cut Sack doors. fell out? Yeah. No, I don't know what happened, but he doesn't wear them anymore. Oh, okay. And then um, I think we're going to switch him to, like, overall Fridays and start wearing That's overalls. That's cute. I like yeah. overall I've never owned – but they were saying they, they cut their overalls into shorts. So that's almost even more hardcore. It's like overall jorts. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. I'm kind of down with it. That's why I'm not upset. No, 100%. But going back to your question. Yeah. I do wash my legs sometimes. Because you're in a business where you come home and you just you Most of my dirty. life, I don't think I did. I just yeah. think I felt the pleasure of soap. No, I do. And, and you let the soap fall down your body. You see soap in your legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But think about it. Yeah. Like. What's on your, what's, you know, like, my exactly. knees have been what sweating. what is on your legs? My knees have been sweating lately at work. The insides or the outsides? The back. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So the it's creases. like, I feel like I have to wash that when I get home. Yeah. My girlfriend will not let me in the bed if I don't shower. If you shower. don't wash your knees? If I, <laughs> if I don't shower. <laughs> oh, well, that's understandable, bro. You're sweating from 7.30 to 4.30. It's fucked yeah, up. you should shower. I think it's after I fucking tattoo for two hours, and I take a shower when really? I get home. Nah, dude, I've gone. But days. I will say, I, I shower like twice a day. Twice? Yeah, it's probably excessive, but I don't wash my legs. You Unless still I think this was my answer when Nick first asked me on days when we would play paintball. You're no, disgusting. Yeah, I have you know, to. You're That's, filthy. I was just gonna say that there is dirt everywhere. And you got to wash everything. I'm like doing in between my toes on those days. So I think the real question but Those are the is, only days I do it. How often do you wash your legs is the real question. Uh, when I play paintball, and the last time was probably a year ago. A year ago. <laughs> you haven't touched your legs since, Peter? Not even your feet? I wash my feet, too. You wash every time? No. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, you, you know, my logic might be like, 
I'm standing in the shower. Water accumulates in the shower. It doesn't drain instantly, you know. There's soap and water floating in the the shower area washing Mm -hmm. my feet. I don't necessarily have to scrub them, I don't think. There's soap and water touching the feet. As well as the rest of my legs because I lather up my body. And then it, it... Gravity makes it fall down the rest of my body. It covers the legs. I do all the areas I should do down there, you know. But as far as, like, the backs of my knees go and my calves, I'm just letting gravity do the work, baby. I mean, it's working, right? I think. I I haven't really gotten many second opinions. I think JoJo just loves me, and uh, she may not tell me even if it was foul. But I haven't gotten any complaints. So, anyway, I think this is a good point to wrap it up. We've covered so much today. Yeah. Kev, it was super fun getting to do this with you, man. I'm excited to do it with you more moving forward. Me too, bro. Um, it was a little all over the place, I'm sure. I guess I'll find out when I watch this back and edit it. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. Uh, if you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It does gonna, wonders, please. Yeah, it. you know, that's... That's really the only fee that we ask, you know. You, we we do this seconds. for fun, um, and it is a lot of fun to do. But the biggest support you could really offer us is just liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Um, we'll see you again next Monday. We'll have a guest next Monday, Kev. I don't yeah. think I've told you about our guest. Then that's next when week. it's gonna get fun. One hundred percent. I mean, I really enjoy doing these videos one on one with you because you know we get to go down all the crazy rabbit holes that we went today but yeah it'll be cool to see you interact with a guest i think our guest next week is going to be really dope and uh has a cool backstory so so i'm excited for you to be a part of that and i'm excited for her to come on the channel and um and get to share her story so thank you guys again it has been another episode of the millennial mentality i am pete papo taco peace damn right holy moly that's like getting money, I'm on my suck again Tryna stack a little dub, tryna catch a win And next time I drop a coupe, it's gonna be a twin turbo Always been a G, but I ain't never been a herb though Well, I'm switching lanes, it's